the Yoda species are cannibals, and that's why there's only a few left. No, don't do that. They eat each other. No, they don't. That's why there's only one left in the universe at a time, because <laughs> they'll just eat each other. <laughs> And I'll say, welcome everybody to another edition of the Heroes Peak Podcast. I am your host, Chris, as always. Uh, we are here to talk about entertainment, uh, culture, pop culture, and whatever the hell we feel like. With me today, as always, I have a great group of friendly co-hosts over to my left, as I see him. I have James. How you doing, James? I am here! <laughs> To make yeah. up from my poor um, energy last week. Back to full full power. Full power. <laughs> you, you need the He-Man sword to go back yeah. to full power. I got my energy, Energon cubes. Great. <laughs> <laughs> That's what's in your drink is Energon cubes. Yeah. All right. And also uh, coming down to us from the from the north. Is it snowing there yet? Mike. How are you doing, Mike? Yeah, I officially have the uh, winter beard going. I've uh, been fighting with my new PC. Finally got it built. Thank goodness. I thought, you, I, I thought you were about to point to the to the uh, red trooper behind you. It was like, whoa, uh, that's an that interesting case. Looks like a cosmic cue or some freaking <laughs> MacGuffin. Oh, uh, I know. I spent days in Stark Labs over here trying to get it together. So <laughs> finally, you know, I had to. Uh, yeah, dummy kept hitting me with the fire extinguisher, but it's all good now. <laughs> all right. And coming to us from far out west. Um, from the socialist capital of the U.S. I don't know. I I, I really lost that one. Uh, mm -hmm. Your apartment looks great. <laughs> it's Brooks. How you doing? I'm doing great. Also, growing out my winter beard as well. Um, <laughs> What's with the uh, weird like cream there? I was gonna say it looks like a cream barrel ad. <laughs> <laughs> How about we all race? Whoever gets the biggest beard, the quickest wins. <laughs> Sounds, sounds I win. Like you used to be my beard back in college, Chris. Oh, oh, <laughs> oh double the time. Oh, oh, oh. Double. I uh, so nice. just to let you know, I shaved this morning. <laughs> Mike, I knew I knew Don't a guy in some testosterone. I, I knew a guy in ninth grade who would do that same thing: oh. shave in the morning and have a beard by by lunch. <laughs> ninth grade. Jeez. Ninth grade. He was a narc, I'm sure. Yeah. <laughs> 21 Jump Street. That's right. right. He's like 30 years old. He's like, I am 12. <laughs> What's the latest slang? Cool. <laughs> Radical. Groovy, awesome. guys. Did you guys see the latest Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles? <laughs> By the way, where can I get some doobies to smoke? <laughs> and I'm and <laughs> having... <laughs> Sorry. Having made the, the full transition to white woman, it's Keith. Oh, wait, no, no. <laughs> uh, we actually, we great actually, joke from last week. From, from the, the, the hidden under the stairs, we have Paige. How you doing? It's been a long time. I finally saw something that got me interested. I mean, we, we decided to let her out of the Hero Speak server room today. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah, she's been. <laughs> been doing all the behind the scenes work yeah yeah are you trying to replace her with that big red cosmic cube behind you That's right. <laughs> <laughs> she she pulled a loki and got into the alternative universe yeah it's a reality stone behind me don't worry all right so today's list for we are going to do just to let everybody know we're going to talk about our inauguration coverage uh a little update on the nfl playoffs uh we're going to give our uh, wonderful co-host, James, and... Oh, I lost my screen. Holy shit. I lost my screen. I can't look at people. There you go. I'm back. So, both uh, James and Brooksy are, have a little segments for themselves, uh, especially Brooksy. She's going to take over this episode after I finish screwing it up. Mm -hmm. And then the reason that we got our wonderful page on here is to talk about the first two episodes of WandaVision, the uh, Disney Plus show starring Wanda and Vision, surprisingly. All right, people. Cool, cool, first, cool. Mike is going to tell us about our inauguration coverage. Go ahead, Mike. Yeah, so I guess tomorrow 
you guys are going to have some kind of new leader, something. Prime I don't know. I haven't heard whatever. anything from the old one. Whatever you call it. New king, something, something. New king. Optimus Prime. So, yeah. <laughs> A new so... Prime. <laughs> new Prime. Biden Prime. <laughs> uh, Uncle Joe's taking over tomorrow at mm -hmm. uh, approximately noon. He'll be sworn in. Festivities, I think, kick off at 11. And the Hero Speak crew will be covering it live. I'm pretty sure we're going to be live on Facebook tomorrow. So, on uh, Facebook? Okay. I right. know, but sadly, by the time we publish this episode, we'll have come and gone, but uh, we'll advertise it on social media. And you can mm -hmm. always watch the replay. Uh, I'm hoping nothing terrible goes down tomorrow. Well, they have removed 12 people from the guard mm -hmm. of the 25,000. 25,000. 12 out of 25,000 is a pretty good number <laughs> overall. I, you know, I'm kind of wondering, too, if we should cover, like, is what time is Trump's thing supposed to be? I think 8 o'clock, right? Isn't it? 8 like o'clock, he's, he's getting on the plane. So okay. I would say 10 o'clock he lands because he's got to be off before noon, right? Yeah. Yeah. Because cause the football and the um, the plane have to go back to him. Though any plane he gets on is technically yeah, Air there, Force I One. I think yeah, there's like two planes. I think so. Yeah, I'm sure there's there's two the planes backup plane would be with Biden. Mm -hmm. Right. Yeah, he could get on a Cessna and and it would be Air Force One. So, yeah. but the official jet, the official uh, Boeing, is is going back. All right. So that's that. Number two, the NFL playoffs. We, my my bracket is still alive. I, even though. I bet against Green Bay. Mm -hmm. My fault. Um, my bracket is still alive. We still have a chance to see the Bucks and the Bills. Now, the big news is that Patrick Mahomes is out, right? Mm -hmm. He's not out. No, he's on, he's undergoing the protocol, the uh, concussion protocol. You know, when NFL decided to get serious about concussions two years ago, they implemented this protocol yeah. that no one really knows like what does it mean can he read his you name go backwards? in the blue tent you go in the blue tent like does he know his mother's maiden name oh he's good yeah. <laughs> like what well, what's your password oh wait no 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 that's not so yeah i thought i thought it was official that he was out i saw that but it could no. have been an could have been an old post you know social media loves to throw you something that's like three days old as oh new. look at that brand new mahomes clear steps but still in protocol again what mm. steps did he clear? <laughs> but makes no sense. <laughs> but that puts him in still. He that'll means that it's it's a, a was it was a stronger hit to the head when he landed on the on the field. Yeah. Then then just because a lot of guys go in the tent, come back out two plays later. You know, being in protocol three days later is not a good sign, honestly. And I hope he's I hope he's well. I mean, I think the Bills would rather beat him at 100 percent. yeah but i hope hope he's all right and uh i'm hoping that the bills get to face brady in the super bowl i think it would would really be the the linchpin and i don't know which way i want it to go as a bears fan i don't really care but as someone who lives in the the area i know this area will be a lot happier and easier to live in if the bills win especially against brady yeah i'm, I'm pulling for the bills all the way yeah. I would just like to point out that James bet on the Kansas you're, City game, which is gonna. why Patrick Mahomes went out. I also bet on the off. Ravens game. Yep. Did you bet for the Ravens? Yeah. 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 So on our sports, our own other sports thread, my buddy picked up the fact that the both teams that I bet on, the quarterbacks were in the concussion. <laughs> <laughs> the <guy could> cuss. <laughs> oh, my God. That is not a coincidence. Let me tell you, that is James Jinx all day. You need to cheer for Brady. <laughs> I know. James, I think I am. Or nothing this weekend again. No, I'm not betting you. <laughs> this guy. This guy's getting a stimulus check from me. <laughs> All these and, failed bets. And we say farewell to Drew Brees. He was a soldier. Was a great quarterback for being five foot nothing. Is he officially retiring? Yeah, you I saw so. it. I. Th yeah. He didn't even have the arm there in that last game. That I know. I, this is sad part. He didn't have it. Last year would have been his year, but it's so funny you know, when you compare it to like baseball, because in baseball, the the managers waste no time pulling a pitcher as soon as he starts slowing down. You know what I mean? And yeah, the, but there's the no real like 
football, there you have backups, but your backups, they just aren't the same. Oh, and, I know, but a lot of times they'll. Hey, they're, they're Chad Han is like, hold my yeah. beer. <laughs> Chad Haney. <laughs> yep. You know, and Jameis Winston's the threw the longest pass in that game. He came in through that fifty yard touchdown pass. Mm. So, but we'll see. It's it's not the same. All right, uh, we won't spend too much time on that. We will. Oh, James, James, I hear you have a couple a uh, uh, crazy gym stories. Now, as as you can yeah. see. James likes to spend some time at the gym. As you can see in our social media posts. Um, yeah, this idea came to mind because um, I was listening to one of the Ringers podcasts, um, Ryan Rossello, and he used to share near the end of his podcast after they got into like the major s- sports topics on some real life crazy stories that are happening at the gym, um, especially during recently COVID experiences. So I've obviously I- I've gone back to the gym since. Um, in New Jersey when the, the, um, the caps were lifted by, by governor Murphy. So I won't say recently there's been any crazy stories. Once in a while you'll get guys or gals who work out without really having their mask covering their full face. They'll kind of have it by their mouth and their nose is exposed. And some folks would just take it off, walk around and then put it on when somebody's actually working, um, show it up. But, I think some of my best stories, and, and I will keep this a reoccurring thing because I have a lot, but I don't want to inundate our entire <laughs> podcast and my crazy gym stories, is I can think of two. When I used to work, in, well, I'm still in midtown Manhattan, but more in the, the fashion district around 39th Street and uh, 7th Avenue, mm-hmm. was a very eclectic, eccentric mixture of folks there. You had your business folks, you had your fashion mm-hmm. folks, you know, you had all types of diaspora of people. But then the gym was like oh, the focal point because everybody, a $10 word. you know, every everyone, no matter what your race, color, creed, orientation, would all frolic to the gym around lunchtime, get get the workouts on and, and move off. But so I used to actually uh, use my lunchtime at work with another coworker of mine, uh, who I'll not name in this podcast. And one time we were working out in the um, trying to rush through because we we're going back to work afterwards. And there was this older um, East Asian fellow who we noticed where the dancing studios are, as opposed to actually do- dancing or boxing. There's some boxing um, punching bags. This guy had a staff and he was like master splintering it in the middle of the dance studio. Mm-hmm. No one no one felt brave enough to tell him this is not the location to do that kind of stuff <laughs> because there's mirrors, there's, there's like AV equipment, there's actual weights, there's... So this guy's doing his thing, and then he showed up, you know, he comes into the, the locker room, and he's getting undressed, and he just has his little short, you know, tidy whities on, and he's doing it again, but this time in slower motion. So people are trying to maneuver around this guy to their lockers behind him, and this guy's like, oh, tss, oh tss. And he's doing all this stuff. So he finally <laughs> walks out, and then this one guy was like, yo, is anyone going to tell this guy that like, he can't do that stuff here? And then my buddy who was going to the gym with me was like, dude, you should go tell him. And he goes, nah, I passed. I passed. Now, now the same gym, my buddy, um, let's call him Mark, you know, for, I want to give him a name as I'm telling you this story. So there was one Friday where I had a pretty big job going out and I couldn't afford the time to take my lunch break and work out. Mm-hmm. So Mark was like, all right, I'm going to go work out. You know, I'll I'll catch you after work for some beers, whatever. By the way, yes, we used to work out in the middle of Fridays and then go get beers and and wings afterwards. So, you know, just balancing, you know, maintaining the balance there. (laughs) Maintaining the balance. So he comes back at like 115. His face is frazzled. I'm like, dude, how'd it go? He goes, dude, I didn't finish my workout. I was like, what happened? Well, it was kind of dead. It was Friday before a holiday, right? It was kind of dead. So... I'm in there, and there's one dude, big brolic dude. You could tell he was on roids. He comes by, and he goes, "Yo, buddy, can you do me a favor?" And he gave me his phone. I need, I need you um to take some pictures of something that I'm doing. So my buddy Mark was like, "All right, maybe this guy wants to see what his form looks. No, video, not pictures." Mm-hmm. It was like maybe this guy wants to see his form, you know, see what he can improve. So my buddy Mark was like, "Sure, no problem, buddy. You know, let me know when you're ready." So dad goes, "Sure." This guy takes off his shirt. Now he's topless in the in, in the gym. Just him and my buddy Mark. And he's uh, he's posing now. 
and he's like doing a whole bunch of posing. <laughs> My buddy Mark is terrified now. He's like, what the hell? This guy's veins was popping. And then at the end, he goes, all right, did you get it all? He goes, yeah, man, I think I did. He goes, you know what you do? You should send that to yourself so you could you know, take some tips from this. <laughs> oh, my God. <laughs> you should just email that to yourself, the video. Just send it to Mark yourself. was like, yeah, yeah, sure. And then Mark <laughs> waited till the guy walked away, ran to the locker room, packed up his stuff, changed back, and came back to the office. He was like, <laughs> I did not want to be in the gym with this guy by myself. He goes, James has seen this dude. I don't know what cycle of steroids he was on, but he had the look in his eyes. <laughs> <laughs> Wait, did his name rhyme with Mark? No. You know who he is, but no, it's not. It does not rhyme with Mark. Okay. No. No, don't mount it on camera, even if you're right. <laughs> so, needless to say, and a couple of weeks later, he stopped going to that gym because of some other um, weird activity that were happening in the, in the sauna. But um, I stuck through it for another year before I, I myself eventually quit that gym as well. What kind of weird activities? <laughs> it's the gym around, you know, you know this popular gym um, chain, and I don't want to name it for being liable or lawsuits, but you know this gym. <laughs> Hmm. Yeah. Probably. So yeah, that that's a few of my. I have some more. We'll share them the next time. Wow. Some some of them involve me directly. That's pretty hilarious. <laughs> Spotting people. They have Spotting no people. Yeah. Hmm. Hmm. <laughs> well, I guess I guess I will stop going to gyms and taking my shirt off and posing for people. <laughs> but you email that to yourself, buddy. <laughs> and then try to get the person's address, you know, because that's like a, that's a, hey, how you doing? That's what my buddy Mark thought it was, but he yeah. just thought maybe this guy was trying to tell him, hey, if you ever need some tips from me, here I am. Here's my demonstration. I'm like, whatever it was, sure. it's creepy. <laughs> okay, well, let's put it this way. Send this to yourself means that you're putting in your number your or info. your email into his into, phone. Into his phone. Yes, we caught that so, too. Uh, hey, I'm trying to look in the, I'm trying to look on the positive side here, man. Come on. <laughs> so okay. if you ever uh, need some roids, I mean training. <laughs> he was like, he looked like he's on his fourth cycle of roids. I was like, there's the, there's four more cycles. Like what? There's four more cycles. <laughs> uh, well, thank you, thank you, James, for that crazy gym stories. No. And Mark doesn't watch the podcast, so he's Mark doesn't watch. The podcast. <laughs> well, oh, that's no good. Mark has to watch the podcast now. All right. So our next segment, our next segment, I'm giving a 10 second pause for my editing in the um, audio. Not really. Okay. Our next segment is our Brooksy Bites segment. Our Miss Brooks is presented each week to the worldwide facilities of the United States Armed Forces Radio and Television Service. Now, Brooksy, what show have you been watching this year that you are going to bring to us and open our eyes to the wider world of entertainment television? What do you got? I'm really excited. I just started watching this. It is The Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Salt Lake City? <laughs> yes, it's a brand new franchise. Oh, that's um, out there the too. Guy. Oh, wow. Wait, that's Wait, a U Utah, right? <laughs> Utah, Salt Lake City, Utah. Yes. So first I'm going to introduce the characters um, give you a little background, and then I want to talk about the common theme. Yes, Paige. Okay, question. Are they allowed to drink? Because I know the Real Housewives love the wine. Can they drink? That's a, that's a good question. So some of them drink and some of them do not. Mm. But most of them do, and most of them get really drunk, like a normal housewife. Like right, a normal gotta... housewife. <laughs> Well, I mean, like a normal house, like the franchise, Real Housewives. They all just get drunk and, like, go crazy. All right. So I got to pull up my little cheat sheet. So first we have Lisa. She's from, originally from New York City, 
lives in Utah. She considers herself a Mormon 2.0. So she's Mormon, but she drinks. Um, (laughs) But he's Muslim, but he drinks and eats pork. So she attended BYU and then stayed in Utah um, and owns like several marketing companies as well as a tequila company. Um, And she is married with two kids um, and I believe lives in Park City anyways. Park City is an affluent area, right? Park City is an affluent area of Utah, yes. Um, Next we have Mary Mary Cosby. She is an interesting character. So she is Pentecostal um, and she is the first lady, meaning her husband is the preacher. Um, her family, she inherited from her grandma, her family's empire of churches, restaurants, houses. She has houses all over America. Um, she like shops at Louis Vuitton every day. She's very fancy. Um, and she also from her grandma inherited her grandma's husband. So when her grandma died, her grandma left her husband to Mary Cosby. So they oh, have since this is juicy. Right. Wait, so what? they have since <laughs> yeah. you inherit the... I know. Uh, know. So they have married works. and have one kid. And it's important to note that from her she... grandmother. From her yes. grandmother. Not her mother, her grand her grandmother. So this yeah, guy's so like eighty she... something years old? Maybe. Maybe older. Um, and wait when did this happen i need to know when this happened 20 years ago and and how i hate to ask how old is this lady probably Um, early 40s yeah i don't know how old she is but typically the housewives are in early 40s they have one kid together who's like 17 so yeah yeah Yeah. you you know the reason i ask yeah i know why you're asking i want to say worst case she was 17 let's continue right all right go go um but it's not her grandpa it's her step grandpa that she married so it makes it better at least so there's no blood Um, relation but that's still the husband of her grandma grandma yeah no Um, it's still like a 70 year old man did impregnating a teenager yeah who also slept with your grandmother yes um, and it's important to note that she <laughs> is black. Um, wow! Because, oh, that did not see that one coming. See? Um, because she like grew up in Utah, and like it's you know not super common to be black in Utah, um, or Pentecostal for that matter. Yeah, um, ask, the, the, ask, ask the mailman. Right. <laughs> the, the next one we have is Heather. Heather is a devout Mormon. Um, Her ancestors were pioneers, and she talks about that all the time. It's a really big deal for her. Um, But And she married Mormon royalty. I think the person that she married is related to John Smith, um, who was like one of the founders. Um, But she got divorced. Yeah, one of the founding pedophiles. (laughs) Exactly. Um, she got divorced, her husband divorced her and she did not want to be divorced. Um, but her husband divorced her and it was a huge deal because the church like rejected her after that because she was divorced and the church does not, the Mormon church does not accept divorced women, um, even though she didn't want to be divorced. So she talks about that a lot. Um, and also when she got divorced, she started to drink because she had never drank before because she was a devout Mormon. So she started drinking and like trying to live for herself and all of those things. And she has three women or three, sorry, daughters that she is now trying to teach about like how to be independent women and not just serve the church and serve their husbands and like get married and procreate. Um, So that's kind of her big storyline. Then we have Meredith Marks. Um, She is Jewish, has lived in Park City, lives in Park City, owns like a um, retail stores in Park City. Her and her husband are married. Um, She has two kids. 
one, uh, um, a daughter and a son. The son's name is Brooks, which I also found very interesting because um, I know my name is a boy's name. Um, I, and... I, honestly, I've never heard your name before, and I've only heard Brooke as a girl. Right. Name. No, I, whatever, but I, I didn't think of it as a boy's name, is it? It is. Common. Um, yeah, there's another, if you are a Real Housewives fan there was a real housewives of orange county one of the ogs of the oc vicky her <laughs> boyfriend's name was brooks also OG. Um, that's okay. that was her like tagline all the housewives have taglines so that was her tagline um so anyways um what's Meredith, your tagline um i don't know that's a good question you need though. to come we'll up to, with a tagline there brooks i i do um so her storyline isn't that interesting other than her and her husband are like separating and they're trying to like work through that. But I don't know, not super, super interesting. Um, and then the next one is Whitney. So she is also a descendant of Mormon royalty, which again is a really big deal. Um, however, um, she fell in love with her boss. They had an affair. She Ooh, got spicy. pregnant. Yep, she got pregnant. They divorced their spouses, married, um, had two kids, and now they've been married, and they are not Mormon anymore because the church excommunicated both her and her her current husband. Um, and, oh, and they are, like, both big drinkers and talk about sex openly, which is, again, like, a really big faux pas in uh the mormon world um and she also has two children and one of them is a boy and his name is brooks as well um mm. so two Jeez, boy, a popular I, mormon name apparently it is um and then her father is a struggling drug addict and she helps him a lot um and that like is there a successful drug addict? I'm just, I guess there is the Wall Street dudes, but I was, right. I was going to say, well, Andrew Lloyd Webber. Yeah. So, Andrew Lloyd go. Webber. Keith, uh, Rich, Keith Richard. But he's yeah, there are. a former. But the reason why that's a big deal is because that further like excommunicates her from the church. Because if somebody does drugs in your family, like you, that, that that's bad on you. Um, as a, gotcha. like a Mormon, right? And then the last one is Jen Shaw. She is a very interesting character. She is Tongan, grew up in Salt Lake City. Most people thought she was black. So she was very ostracized growing up in a traditionally white Mormon world. Her husband is, um, is uh, what's her I'm looking for? Is um, uh, Islam. Um, m Muslim. Thank you. That's what I'm looking for. He's Islam. He's the entire faith. <laughs> He's the entire faith. He is a Muslim. His, her husband is Muslim. So she converted to Muslim. Um, to, she converted to Islam. Wow. Anyways, that is also <laughs> like a big, like, oh, and her husband is the coach of U of U, I believe the football coach of U of U. Um, wow. so him being, them being Muslim is like a huge deal in Salt Lake City, Utah. So I am probably 10 episodes deep on this so far. Um, and what I find very interesting about this is number one, a little background about myself. I lived in Park City, Utah for five years. Um, mm -hmm. It is a very interesting place to live. And one of the things that was very, very predominant when you live, and even in Park City, Utah, which is the like very quote unquote liberal part of Utah, um, it's like the Austin of Utah, pretty much. Um, so it's very liberal. A lot of rich people, all they really care about is like making money, smoking Spoiled weed milk. and buying Louis Vuitton. Right. Um, so, so the interesting thing about this, the Real Houses of Salt Lake City is they talk about religion a lot, which is not a big deal in any, I mean, maybe it is a big deal in any of the other house size, but it's not like a predominant conversation. And this one it is. And again, like I said, I find that interesting because I lived in Park City, Utah for five years and it was mm -hmm. such a big deal. I have never talked about religion more in my entire life. Like, but not just as a religion, like it's a cultural thing in Utah, if that makes sense. So it's like- It's almost a status symbol. 
by the sound yes. of it. Like exactly. just being being part of a specific church gives you status by the sound of it. Being part of the Mormon church specifically. And like, um, I guess having, I don't know, family members that were founders or something is a big deal. I never really heard of that. But like I said, it, it's such a cultural experience. Like you have to behave in a certain way, even if you're not Mormon, because that's just what's expected of you in Utah. I was a bartender in Utah and the liquor laws were very strict. Like you had to measure every single ounce of liquor that you sold compared to like what your register said. You could not be over, you could not be under. It was very strict. You could only have one ounce of liquor in front of you at any given time. So you couldn't have like a Jack Daniels and a shot of something. You could have a Jack Daniels and then you could drink that and then take, and then I could serve you like a shot. They can't but you double fist. Right. You oh man, have... I would have died in college. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, and that's because like the entire state is controlled by the Mormon religion. Um, so anyway, so most of the storyline is around like, um, like these women kind of rejecting being traditional Mormons and traditional housewives because it's still like very predominant today. You marry young, like 18, 19 years old, even now in 2021, you have kids, you have five, six, 10 kids, whatever it is. Um, and the women take care of the kids and the men work. And that's just how it is. Again, it's very cultural as well. Even if yeah. it's not your religion, it's just what it's like there. Hey, Brooks, like the other housewife shows, do these women, do some of them have pre-existing relationships where they're friends in the same circle? Or is this show, this yeah. series just showing them like, they all tend put together to be on the show and some of them don't really know each other's families and stuff. No, most of them all know each other previously. Okay. Yeah. yeah, that's, that's like a, a lot, theme. Right, like a couple of them went to BYU together and now they're best friends and they like own businesses and throw parties in, in uh, Park City. And like the last episode that I watched was about Sundance um, and them all like throwing Ooh. parties for Sundance. I used to work Sundance Film Festival when I lived in Park City. Um, it was a, like a crazy time, but you made a lot of money and saw a lot of famous people. So it was kind of, I don't know, kind of cool. But I used to always say like the worst aspects of the city I'm from come to the city I live in because people just like go crazy and party and there's so much like drugs and the whole town completely changes. And it's all about like who you know and who you are, where like Park City is really more about like skiing and, you know, like doing snow activities. Um except during Sundance. Yeah. So anyways, that's my take on Sun, on the Real Housewives of Salt Lake. Um, like I said, super interesting to me because it's all about like, you know, this religion, but then rejecting it, but then still having the like cultural boundaries of the religion that they're oh. trying to reject. And Okay, I just, I just had a realization and you said John Smith earlier and I was thinking yeah. the Pocahontas John Smith. No, the no. John Smith that this found is, it. This is Joseph Smith. Joseph Smith. Oh, uh, is it Joseph Smith? I thought Smith? it was John also, too. Okay, yeah, because I was like, I, I, I was a little harsh there, but it was related to the Pocahontas John Smith. <laughs> I thought thing. it was Jebediah Smith in my head, but. No, no, this is Joseph Smith. No, I, yeah, you're right. Dude, my apologies. This is the dude that found the stones. <laughs> yeah, in, in New York, upstate New York. In right. New York. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah, yeah. And only he read the stones. The stones were only like visible to him. <laughs> Yeah. And then he told Correct everybody, me. we have to, we have to like walk to Utah. He could have been upstate New York. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Now he was 40 years older than his wife, so it's possible. Probably. And, hey, wait. go ahead. No, Sorry. no, no. He was only a year. I'm looking at the wrong year. He was only a year older than his wife. Okay. Much better. So, so like, like better. the other housewives, which I used to watch, I haven't watched them in probably a decade. Do they? Do they? Have, is there any cat fights or anything with the husbands that get a oh, little yeah. bit? Yeah, like stuff like that. Any juicy stuff like that with these women, or is like the religion aspect keeps them from being violent? No, it kind of does, but I just thought the religion aspect was so interesting. Again, because I lived in Park City, Utah, so I sort of get it and understand it. Mm -hmm. Had I not lived in Park City, I wouldn't like it. Would be this weird thing to me, but um, like I. Like I said, you know, everybody that I, everybody that I, that I knew that 
didn't live in Park City because most of the people that live in Park City aren't actually from Park City, but people that lived in the surrounding areas, they all were Mormon. They all grew up Mormon. They all talked about it. Um, it was all like a big thing. Either you didn't drink or you did drink as a Mormon. If you did drink, you were known as a Jack Mormon. I don't remember why, but it was a thing. Um, we're probably, hopefully- Jack left. Daniel Mormon. <laughs> yeah. Hopefully I'm not offending anybody that's listening right now. Um, but we'll get there eventually. True. Um, <laughs> but the, the one like kind of big thing that is obvious is that, um, a lot of people think it's really weird that Mary Cosby married her grandfather. Um, cause it is weird. Which, I don't want right. to, I'm going to say it. And it's weird. Don't. <laughs> It's yeah. weird. It's one thing, then, you know, age gaps. We all understand age gaps, but when someone becomes a a part of your family via marriage, that yeah, generally twice. generally should kick them out of the marriage <laughs> pool for you. Yeah. You but know? her grandma, like that was she keeps like talking about it that it's her grandma that wanted this and so she's like it's not weird because my grandma knew me and my grandma knew that i was the one that was going to inherit that makes it even like, weirder the yeah. church and yeah no that i means, agree this means your grandma know what she was thinking about you yeah. i'm sure Jesus. there's videos of this on uh porn <laughs> oh my god oh. it's probably a whole category <laughs> <laughs> i don't yeah. know mike let us know <laughs> sure can i use your account <laughs> it's open go ahead oh, it's the okay. same password he's got the premium also, also just in case you guys didn't know we had to teach this to james if you do if you look at pornhub on your phone you want to go to the private mode why are you right, bringing this up <laughs> you had to teach this to james there's like a whole story behind it everybody wants to know now well, that also means that Brooke, Brooks had that much deeper knowledge about it than you did. Yeah, her and another one of our subscribers who will not be named. Everybody knows that except James. Well, now he does. <laughs> um, oh. So that's wow. my take on Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. <laughs> wow. um, super interesting so far. I I'll think... wait for the reunion. <laughs> uh, how many more episodes yeah. are there before, before the, the season's over? The, the, I think they're filming. I think they just filmed the reunion. So did I'm like film, they filmed through COVID. Yeah, they are filming. They did a couple of the reunions on Zoom. They did the reunion with Potomac in person, but six feet distant. Um, they have filmed Atlanta, and I think they did that in person as well, but six feet distant, um, socially distant. And then I just I know that they're like just filmed. Um, Real Housewives of Salt Lake City. Okay, when's the crossover gonna happen? <laughs> you don't you don't want to see yeah. Ad Atlanta and get in that. with the Potomac, get in with the. Uh, hey, I don't think the they ever Utah. had crossovers. Come on, I can think that would be fun. Jersey and New York, no, not even. That. I don't even think Jersey and New York crossover. Yeah, I never did. That's All interesting. Right. You should pitch mm. that to Andy. That's mm. right. I'll, I'll, Andy, I'll, talk I'll... to Kevin Feige. He'll give you some pointers. <laughs> Don't talk to uh, Zack Snyder. <laughs> Not the guy you want helping you put your housewives. <laughs> Could you imagine everything's got like that, that filter on it? <laughs> Snyder cut housewives. <laughs> More fights. I knew though. you guys could bring it back. I he'll it. he'll get an extra hundred million to 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 make a, his version of it because he didn't get it the first time. <laughs> There'll definitely be more Blades fights on everything. All right. Whoo. Okay. That that really brought in a, a new range, a new crowd there, Brooks. You, you guys were all staring at me like, "What the fuck?" This is what I generally look like when you guys are talking about like Snyder cuts. <laughs> <I'm just> like, <laughs> Snyder <interesting>. cuts. <laughs> Whatever. Oh. <laughs> I was like, who the hell is the Snyder guy that keeps talking about? God damn, <laughs> another episode about this dude? <laughs> I know. Uh, all right. So we do have one more uh, section for Brooks. And that is a new section we are dubbing as simple Ask the Nerds. 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 What is a nerd? <laughs> and Brooks here refuses to believe she's a nerd, so she. I feel is like this is copyrighted somewhere, so I hope nobody comes at us. That was our segment. Uh, we'll come up with something better. We're, we'll figure. Too bad. It. 
<laughs> Too bad we're taking it. All right. Talking to you, Estonia. So, so it's come to our attention that, that we do confuse Brooks quite a bit with some of our ch geek chatter. And she uh, would like to know what the hell we're talking about. And so we're going to give her a section here to ask us <laughs> any questions she wants to ask us. Yeah, I would um, like to know too, so. Because <laughs> I'm not a nerd. I, my favorite is when Keith pretends he's not. <laughs> right. No. He does and, do that. And, and then we start going to Lord of the Rings and he give us book only information. <laughs> it's not even in the movies. <laughs> and James is like, didn't you introduce me to anime? What the hell? <laughs> I know. Where we were kids. <laughs> That's right. Because we know we stop doing things fun when we're adults. adults. That's why we're here. Yeah, he's All right. like, it's on page 47, man. <laughs> <laughs> All right, Brooks. Throw it at us. What do you got? All right. I got a couple of questions. <clears throat> the first one is, is, I feel like this is going to be a softball, I think. So how did the Justice League form and how did they get their name? Well, you see, there's these this mom named Martha. And this. the Snyder version. <laughs> that, again, bringing Snyder back into this. <laughs> um, how did the Justice League form? Uh, basically, completely different characters, but in the same universe, all get together and they needed a name. <laughs> what was more that like, universe? More like Detective Comics <laughs> needed a way to make more money. And it had all these marquee characters. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And say, hey, let's do an issue where we combine all these folks and throw some justice stuff in there, the justice society, because there was they actually had justice society before that. Mm -hmm. But let's make it the Justice League of America and make more profit. Boom. Yeah, and then when you have all the characters, someone has to buy a whole new. Like if your favorite is Superman, you buy all the Superman stuff, and then Justice League comes out, and it's got Superman in it. You're gonna buy. The, the Justice League comic as well as your yeah. Superman comic. Because if you and don't buy the Justice like, League oh, comic... Hey, this Shazam guy, sort of like him, he's sort of like Superman, but he's a kid like me. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, discovering new... So it really was just a money venture at first to create teams, like a, a super team out of other groups. Um, other than okay. that, 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 that's why they were created. The comic version of, like, in story is just changes yeah i don't know what yeah, yeah. depends on which universe mm -hmm. what's the like common universe well uh, let's say something like um uh batman exists superman exists and batman thinks superman is they end up fighting and then they end up being friends because they find out they're both heroes enemies become friends yeah, friends become enemies so is, mine, Richard. so is mine cool bro let's <laughs> Yeah, it, there's there's probably a dozen different ways yeah. that they there was become. there was a recent rebirth fifty two that came out within the last decade that kind of retconned all this stuff, Brooke. So not that we're all fishing, we don't have a response for you, but there's just so many different versions of this. It's a great question, by the way. Did not see that mm -hmm. that one coming. But okay. um, I figured you guys were all going to be like, Ugh, don't you know that blah, 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 did blah, no, blah. No, there are so oh, many there. different. You, you came with the heat already. <laughs> That's curry <laughs> mode. <laughs> All right. I feel good about this then. Um, okay. Is Batman the only superhero that doesn't actually have a superpower? No, there are tons of superheroes. So if you go... He's this probably guy the most right, famous one. Wait, this wait, guy right you, here? Let's DC. Right. Oh, you want to do DC first? Yeah, let's do DC first. So you have the question. That's one. So that would be... I don't think I have him. Well, Robin. That's what, and everybody else yeah. with the Batman family. Uh, the arrow, the green arrow doesn't have superpowers and all of the related uh, and, heroes. Um, yeah, all the ones who use machines to augment their powers, technically none of them have superpowers. Um, yeah, so if you if you pop over like the, the Marvel Universe, you would say Iron Man doesn't have superpowers, Hawkeye doesn't have superpowers, Black Widow doesn't have superpowers. So there's a whole list. They usually end up just using guns. So right. like anytime yeah. you see a character with a gun, he probably doesn't have a superpower. I feel like power. DC probably has a lot more of these versions than Marvel. Like I'm mm -hmm. thinking Lex Luthor is probably the the most famous villain other than the Joker. Actually, yeah, the the two mace the two most famous villains in DC don't have superpowers. 
Yeah, Batman. most of most of Batman's rogue gallery doesn't have superpowers mm -hmm. actually. But Bat that's because Batman doesn't have superpowers, so he doesn't normally go up against the superpowers. Yeah. Okay. okay. That okay. makes sense. Yeah. So you you mentioned uh, villains. So my next question is. Is there a superhero that turned into a villain? <laughs> like WWE, WWF? Like exactly what Wait, I was thinking. Are you thinking? Ah, yo, this is a great segment. Are you thinking permanently or because every hero has become a villain temporarily? Every <laughs> hero has become a villain temporarily. I was thinking permanently. Okay. Like, was Joker once like. No. No, but normally those world stories where he's a hero. Oh. Yeah, but main universe. I think main, main universe. universe. Um, so hero that became a villain permanently. Oh, well, Sinestro. Sinestro. Yeah. Sinestro. Sinestro, but he's not like an A list. He wasn't. No, a but he hero, is definitely. He was one a, of the. Go ahead. Was, no, go ahead. Sinestro. I don't think I have a Sinestro. Uh, so I have a, one in my head, but I want to do quick was a Green research. Lantern. I'm not cheating. I just want to confirm and, something. And the Green Lantern in the Green Lantern Corps, there's actually different color rings that get their power from different ways. And he took the yellow power ring, and he became an e uh, a bad guy. So Sinestro. Mm -hmm. If you watch the Green Lantern movie with um, Ryan Reynolds, it happens mm -hmm. at the very end of the movie. Right. So apparently he was dishonorably discharged for abusing his power, according to Wikipedia. What, Sinestro? Yeah. Does that sound right? Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay. I have one guy, but I'll let you guys Go ahead, finish. go ahead. I'm, I'm this one is going to require some deep nerd talk, but mm -hmm. I think Magneto, Magneto is a great example of this. Yeah. Stanley himself said that when he created Magneto, he was supposed to be more like Malcolm X to Professor X's Martin Luther King Jr. So that would be and this guy right here, Magneto. Yeah, that guy right there. And as the comics were being rewritten and they were redoing the X-Men, he became proud and center of being a much darker version of Malcolm X for the mutants. Mm. And I don't think – I'm trying to think of all the storylines since the 70s. So the he basic never, he never went back to his original '60s version, right? So the basic storyline for Magneto is he was a child of the Hol a, a Jew a Jew during the Holocaust, and his family was killed during the Holocaust, and his he gained his powers basically, and that's what saved the him. Trauma, yeah. And so he, he's always been on the edge of basically trying to fight for mutant kind in a way that's a little bit more right. any means necessary Malcolm right. X Professor X was Martin Luther King pacifist mutants should integrate you know civil rights for mutants and so, then Malcolm X was like let's form my own let's go back to Africa version Genosha you know yeah so basically it he he's a bad guy in the fact that he he does hurt people but he always had a goal that was mm -hmm. more uh, wasn't as bad kind of like um uh black panther what am i thinking of killmonger killmonger i mean magneto did go further to the dark side when he wanted to eradicate homo superior i mean yeah uh, homo, at some point yeah at some he point he goes back dark guy. and never yeah. really recovered back so know, all dark is that what it's called <laughs> <laughs> you turn here like the, like turn heel <laughs> That's uh, a good one, man. Yeah, yeah, Thanks, that's a good guys. one. I, I prepared it. Oh, advance. oh, no, no, I, I got a great homework. one. I, I got a great one. Ant Man, Jason Todd. Oh, yeah, he never, so, he never was re so redeemed. Jay Jason Todd, I don't have one here, is, is a Robin, so one of Batman's Robins, and he was beat to death, to death by um, by the Joker, but he turned into the Red Hood, which basically became a villain. And then wait, wait became, wasn't he re redeemed? And then he was redeemed again. All right, but, so that's yeah. I mean, he he also plays on that line of being a hero versus a villain. You know, sometimes comics don't really let somebody go a full distance in the way that they're heading. You know what I mean? Like Jean Grey, um, mm -hmm. Jean Phoenix. Grey, Phoenix, Dark Phoenix is a great line to put that iffiness on. I have a Jean Grey question. Oh. Give it to Jesus. me. Jesus. I love All it. All right. 
This one is actually from my boyfriend because I didn't know who Jean Grey was. But because uh, <laughs> I, I was asking Shit. him. Okay. I don't have it right here. Did Wolverine have sex with Jean Grey? Yes. They're a truple. Triple? Truple? They're, they're actually all like, they're, yeah, they're a truple now. So with who? Us. Does the comics uh, for the past year and a half? Shit. Like they literally have a room. So Wolverine sleeps here. Jean and um, and um, Scott sleep here, and Emma Frost has a room here. Oh, I Scott is Cyclops, by the way, Brooks. Yeah, yeah. So Cyclops so Cy is the guy with the red Emma. visor. Oh, I do know him. Thank you. Okay. Yeah. So yeah, they were they were a love triangle for a very long time, where it was Scott and Jean as a couple, in, in eventually being married, and Wolverine was kind of that lost guy looking in, and Jean was kind of always wrecker. Jean was kind of always interested. You know, Wolverine actually is written as a guy who gets a lot of ladies. He's got so many kids, right? He is constantly banging. really. Yeah. He is banging all the time. Um, he's, 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 he's one of those short guys who actually gets women. So, <laughs> wow. he is, he's like five, three. Well, so Lorraine anyway. is five, three. Yeah. yeah. Five, yeah three, it's not Hugh like Jackman. Down. Yeah. It's not Hugh Jackman. It's, Hugh Jackman has the whole, it's the new animal dude. Confused. That guy. Oh. He's like a Wolverine stocky. Yeah, short. So anyway, yeah, and it was always looking in, and basically they eventually said, you know what, we'll just give it to them, and they're uh, trouble. Everybody's living with it. Got it. Okay. Good I'll one. let him know the answer is yes. And and if you ever watch any X-Men media, uh, Wolverine and Scott will always hate each other because for this reason. Because of Jean Grey. Yeah, in fact, the, the movies he's, touch he's upon it, too. He's a bad guy. I mean, he's, he's a bad boy. And, and he's a good guy. He's a good boy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's that whole dynamic. And now he's got both. Right. Jean's like, you As know what? Screw should. this. She's, I'm just, I'm going to do what I want. Mm -hmm. And it's not like either of them can do anything about it. She, she is the most powerful mutant in the group. Yeah, definitely in a group. Yeah. And I think they're just both fine with it because Scott's got Emma and it's Emma. So and then Wolverine has a plethora of other <laughs> Wolverine yeah. has everybody Wolverine's else. Got a bunch of other people and then Scott and Jean have a whole family now that you know mm -hmm. they have multiple kids that are Oh, let's not start that now we get out of deep rabbit. There's actually hole a whole kids. podcast so, just about that. Stuff, about their so. whole family because kids they have from the a future whole family came back in the past. <laughs> So, Wait, yeah, have you have seen families. have you seen the Deadpool movies? James, no, have I uh, seen Brooke. The Deadpool movies. Oh, no, I know you have not uh, seen the Deadpool movies. Not All in right. the movie theaters. Really. All right, maybe you've seen it on TV. Oh no. shit! I'm wearing Scott right here. What am I doing? Oh, um, look at that. That guy. All right, go oh, ahead. Your Jim Lee shirt. Yeah. Dope. Dope. Um, right. James, if I haven't seen them. With you, I haven't seen them. Then no, um, I haven't seen them. Okay. Um, all right. My I have two more questions. And I know it. we only have two minutes. So um you got time for one more. Okay, one more. <laughs> Who was two more. the first well let me okay, let me go to this one. <laughs> um, do main superheroes ever just die off? Yeah. No. Yeah. <laughs> When For you like, mean main, yeah, it's got the yeah, like a Batman or Superman, or they will die temporarily and then come back. Yeah, that's but like guys permanently. Are. Is no. there anybody that's like permanently died? Not a main yeah. main, no. Not if somebody that carried his own issues for over a hundred comic issues. No, no, they will always come back in some shape, manner, or form. They yeah. will be reborn. Some... They will be. They will be a, in a cocoon somewhere. They will be yeah. hijacked Adam by Mark. an alien alien race. They will be cloned. Okay. They'll, something will happen, and they will come back. Yeah, I remember when I bought the Death of Wolverine issue, thinking this was the last one, and then Magneto one year got, later it came back. I was like, "What a waste of money!" Magneto has been turned into a child like three times, just so he he's still around. And then oh, wow. that way they could be like, "Hey, that's how we explain this guy who originally was from the Holocaust. Why he's still around and still hot, you know? And, and, right, exactly. Mm -hmm. And he gets hotter every year, basically. Every year. When, when he was Joseph and he had the long white hair, it was exactly. like, okay. 
And then they'll be like, alternative universe, everybody's back again. Yeah, I think Captain America died at the end of the Civil War in the comics, but he's back now. I'm like, at the end of the Civil War, that was, oh, I didn't really. Yeah, in the mid 2000s, that issue, Civil War, which the, the movie was based on. Right, 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 right. Yeah, I mean, remember the Death of Superman comic was huge, and then they brought him back into four. That was the biggest one. Yeah, the, yeah. No, that thing was bigger than that one. Mm. What what was the second one? Just so that we know, though we don't have time. I'm just curious. What was your um, other question? So I guess this is a, uh, well, the question was who was the first ever superhero? And I guess you have to well, say like DC or Marvel. No, no, Superman. Right? Or no. Um, no, outside no. of outside of talking like um, the 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 spirit. Not the spirit. Um, yes, shadow. I think it's the spirit. The spirit. Oh, the shadow. The shadow. It was one That's before one. Superman. One year before but, Superman. But as you know, superheroes with superpowers, because the shadow was a lot more like Batman esque than anything. Mm -hmm. The superhero, as you know it, gotcha. with with, with powers. superpowers, yeah. was Superman. And he couldn't even fly originally. He could he just, just jump really well. Literally leap tall buildings in a single bound. <laughs> That's why he called, that's why his name is Superman because he's the first superhero. No, I mean it's a basic <laughs> name. Right. No, because he had super strength and he said, Hey, let's just call him Superman. I actually don't sure. know. I've I've never heard anyone interview Schuster uh, an interview with Schuster or anything like that that tell me why they named him that. No. I heard Kevin Smith said in an interview, but again, not that he's the creator, but No, I but if he, he might have talked to somebody who knew like I've heard a lot of different things interesting new new stories that i hadn't known before but i've never heard yeah. anybody go hey why did you name him superman i'm assuming but superman but the, probably off of the name superman right superman superman is... but the technical answer is and we call him the shadow but he's the phantom in 1936 the phantom, he's officially yeah. known in guinness well, as a first superhero although he had no superpowers mm -hmm. he just put a costume on and a mask got right. it and there was a movie for him, Anna, uh, was it Adam Baldwin or Alex Baldwin? Oh, no, no, no. No, it was no. a guy from Titanic. Billy, Billy, Billy Zane. So that Billy guy Zane. was the yeah. Phantom. Right. Oh. Billy me. Zane was the Phantom. I think That's what we're talking about. Baldwin Phantom. Was, Alex Baldwin was the Shadow. Was the Shadow, yeah. yeah. Yeah, Batman's based on the Shadow. Somewhat interesting. That's very good, man. This is a oh. thanks, guys. Oh, that was awesome. I had a lot of fun. Yeah, who Yay. cares about WandaVision now? Who cares about WandaVision now? I can never. No, no, no. We <laughs> not unless you guys want to force Paige to come back. No, no, no. Paige makes Paige time for this. I can, I can actually make it pretty quick because one of my friends texted me. I think. Um, on Monday and was like, hey, so I have thoughts about WandaVision. I didn't think it was so good. And I was like... Well, let's uh, let's start with mm -hmm. an intro to the show, Chris, right? All right. Before we get started, does anyone want to get out? You've heard of this. You've seen this, right? You know what that is. It is unavoidable. It is your destiny. Is this not why you are here? Do or do not. There is no trouble. Not the shit off. So, who haven't watched Michael it. always keeping us on track. Damn. <laughs> always. It's a hard job, but someone's got to do it. <laughs> so, expect the music here, and it's basically going to be WandaVision is the 2020 television series on Disney Plus, uh, based in the Marvel Universe, starring uh, the character Wanda and the character Vision, played by Paul Bettany and uh, Mary Kate. No, Mary Kate. <laughs> Related to. Related to Elizabeth, Mary Olsen. Elizabeth, Elizabeth Olsen. Olsen. I'm sorry. Also, Elizabeth. it's a 2021 show, not 2020. Oh, it is technically 2021. <laughs> I forgot what year it was. Look at that. I know. I we all did. Yeah. It is a nine episode series, correct? And so. uh, it is coming out weekly, which is why we'll be able to talk about the first two episodes, which just aired in 2021. I just found out. Yep. <laughs> okay. So now I'm going to let Paige take it away because this was a interesting series. Wait, so what's Paige, the show about, though? I don't know what the show's about. I don't know what the show's about either. That's let's, why Paige, let's Paige, Paige tell us. us. Damn, Paige, Mike. Tell what the yeah, tell me what it's about, Paige. Okay. So 
one of the things that I think is really fascinating about the show is you go in already, they already know you know. They're assuming you know who these characters are, even though um, Scarlet Witch, uh, Wanda, has only been in the movies for a combined 20 minutes. Really? That's li- Wow. Yeah, she's only been on screen for 20 minutes. <laughs> wow. Yeah, that's why it's like, oh, wow. So they're really fleshing out this character because in the comics, going back to the whole, um, the whole heroes that become villains, Wanda is the best way to explain her to people who don't read the comics is she's like a god level chaos magician. And she is Magneto's daughter, but I don't know if that's true in this. No, they, they got rid of that. They, yeah, they, they retconned that. Girl and her are no longer Magneto's kids. That's, that's, that's a factoid. Yeah, that they're, was all the politics between Fox and Disney at the time. So. Exactly. So they're no longer. But um. But that can change now. So. It can. And, Jeez, uh, I hope not. It's so confusing. Yeah. She has the ability to change reality. So, um, without getting too much into that, uh, the whole thought is that's how they're going to have, like, you know, they've been talking about Spider Man 3 is going to have, like, all the Spider Man's and Doctor Strange and Doctor Strange, Multitude of Madness. Mm -hmm. And that's probably how they're going to lead through that door. So, we don't know that much. We go in not knowing anything, and they're not really giving you anything. You're just giving little tidbits. Like, but yeah, so the uh, sorry to interrupt, but the weird yeah. thing is that Vision is supposed to be dead, right? Correct. So I think exactly. we want to start by saying this takes place as Phase Four of Marvel after the end of Endgame, right? So after Endgame, and yes. Wanda is an Avenger. Killed him. Yes. yes, Wanda is an Avenger. Yes, yes. as Wanda's for Avengers Avenger, too. Wanda killed Vision because she was the one who destroyed the Mind Stone. But... Oh, wait, Thanos came back, turned back time, grabbed <laughs> killed him, him again. killed him again in front of her. So she watched this mm. guy who she hasn't actually even, if I remember, right, she hasn't even kissed him? No, they did yeah. kiss. They did they kiss. kiss in Infinity okay. War. They, yeah. they did more than that. Yeah, it was weird. They, they had like coitus, <laughs> that post-coitus um, moment did by you the window. Did you just say coitus? <laughs> hey, it's, a, it's a PG-13 um, freaking podcast. Keith's not here. <laughs> but, <laughs> he's gonna throw in a voice later. Don't he worry. Movies, he was just talking about maybe we should try dating, and then he got the ouch. Yeah, it looked like they just came out of bed, and the way that scene was shot, right. like they were just intimate, and then oh, they were kind of like yeah. talking. It could by be the red. Window. They are in a relationship. But that's yeah, it's yeah. Not... So they were like freshly in a relationship. So they are not married. They like basically. They're like, we should make this work. Okay, yay. And then Thanos comes in, everything goes to hell. Mm-hmm. Uh, he yeah. does not get resurrected at the end of the movie. So he's still dead. But <gasps> he's alive in this one. And he's charming as fuck. And they're fine. <laughs> sorry, swear. Sorry, guys. It's all right. <laughs> That's you're, you're the the, there goes you're that the PG-13 of the rating. You're the, you're the Keith of the day. You're allowed, I'm, I'm, you're allowed yes, one half bomb in a PG-13 movie. <laughs> That's right. One half but, bomb. Um, yeah, he like they have a lot of you know the Dick Van Dyke, the Bewitched, the first two episodes. Um, there's so much stuff like, and I think that actually the first one's more I Love Lucy by the yes. opening. The yeah. second one is more Bewitched. Uh, oh, come on, guys. We get well, the it's gonna it's gonna be a theme, so they're yeah. gonna switch. And they're then gonna, it's gonna be like Brady's Bunch. 80s mm-hmm. is gonna be probably Roseanne. I don't Something. know if we're gonna get to 90s. So so yeah, so I'm just saying that we've watched all, I've watched all those black and white shows. So. I have a so, feeling uh, the '80s is going to be Full House, just as a knock to not to to yeah. her Holy sisters. Crap. Yeah, I didn't think about that. Hey, but, if if they can get her sisters on and Fuller House can, they could get her sisters. No that would be crazy. They were those actually. Girls were tired I gotta tell Serena ago. that. <laughs> Serena, Serena, Listen, <laughs> those girls There's wouldn't no even be do. Funny. Those girls wouldn't even do their own re- reboot. So. Yeah, they're but their about- reboot doesn't have the money of, of Disney. Of Disney. And, and their familial connections. They're, but they're but something you may want to page me want to mention. They're not going to do it. I don't think so. Is Easter eggs throughout the yeah. last okay. two episodes. Well, uh, before we get... That's what I loved so much about the show is not a single scene exists where there isn't an Easter egg. Even like the WandaVision. The, so, the animation, every scene you could pause and be like, 
that's something that's from a comic. That's something from like way back in the 60s, like every single scene, because they know we're streaming it. They know people are going to be picking it apart. So they just, everything, the date on the calendar, the fact that the girl in the calendar, the calendar itself has a girl watching TV. The the heart is the um, on a date that's significant for the introduction, I think, of vision to the comics. It's, I'm, I'm not 100% sure. I heard that from a podcast where mm-hmm. someone was discussing it. I haven't double checked it, but. So I have a question for everybody yeah. before we go too much further. Is this a show that locks out the normal viewer? Yes. Wait, you, no, no, hang on. No, 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 no. The only people it, who are going to watch this are MCU fans. That's yeah. what I'm saying. Does so this, does are this. Are locking out? Like it's like Mandalorian saying it's Mandalorian going to lock out normal viewers, but no, no, no. You can watch the Mandalorian without having watched any other Star Wars. It is its own completely self-contained thing. Yes, you have a few you things, you few people. You can watch Mandalorian without knowing a lick of Star Wars. Can you watch WandaVision? Wait, 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 without... I disagree with that statement yeah, too. So do I. You cannot watch Mandalorian without because you don't understand what's happening. It's a yeah. it's a western. Like it's why a does it's a generic Western. Yeah, but a generic Western, you at least establish some sort of like, okay, is it a Western based in Southwest America? Is it in it's space? It's based in space. There's basic rules. You don't know anything about this force thing and this. Yeah. Neither does he. Thing. Jin learns about the force. He literally asks him, is this is this Jedi stuff? Lasers like, being. Nah, I think you're taking way too liberties and no, assuming no, no. that the Mandalorian is his own so, standalone. Okay, let, let's just say, though you will get more non-Star Wars people to watch Mandalorian than you will get non-MCU people who that I, yes. watch yeah. I give you that. Okay. Yeah. I give you that. Because it, it, even and, though... And that's because of the nature of this particular show. Right. Where, it, like, the whole sitcom switching, as opposed to a, a straight-along Western where you've got established physical rules, mm-hmm. ship lands on a planet, people live and breathe, as opposed to this... You know, stuff, yeah, stuff like that's contained. happening, and you know, Almost there's no rules established yet. So, like, what so are you? The, why, why are we watching? What is this? Um, so this from from it, the it, trailers from Falcon and Winter Soldier, that looks more like a Mando style mm-hmm. show. Yeah, like a you know an adventure type that anybody can kind of watch and go. Okay, there's two heroes here fighting bad guys, right? Right. So so I'm looking at Wandavision in general mm-hmm. as a. Uh, where's Waldo for MCU fans and comic fans? Yeah. Well, yeah, and any you have to have some previous interaction. You can just love Endgame and come into it and get something out of it. Yeah. But what I'm saying is, you you have to have some previous knowledge of the universe. I think for you to really enjoy what you're watching here. Yeah, I mean, I, I think that's obvious to like if you don't know who wanda is you're watching this thing and going why is she moving objects around you know what i mean yeah, why did her yeah. accent change you know you're gonna have like a lot of questions like is that uh, why, her why, accent just changed? why does vision change his, his you know from his purple to his human skin yeah like what's know? happening yeah, like, is this guy a robot like or is he human <laughs> yeah i just is he a to... robot or is he a human listen so when you say saying... locking it out i think yeah you, if someone's never watched the avengers from avengers 2 on then right. no yeah this isn't they're going to be confused as hell about Not this show for you. Okay. but for the general I... for the general person like brooks who's about to speak who's gone <laughs> with me to these movies she will understand parts of the show well mm-hmm. yes go ahead brooks um okay so the official answer to that question is from the marketing department um, is there are three reasons why a non-Marvel fan should watch this show. She I wrote them down. She went into the official. Oh, great. Took my notes. We know where she I got know. this from. She ahead. went She went real homework this week. I did. I don't know what was wrong with me. Um, don't expect this every week, though. Um, okay, so three reasons. One is it is homage, it is an homage to classic sitcoms. Right, um, so, so they think people will be interested because of that. The second is that it, it is exploring different genres, something that's not really ever been done. Um, so just that being different, they think that people will want to watch. And the third is because um, it is a creative risk. 
Okay, so in answer to the first one, no. The comedy was <laughs> comedy sucked. Yeah, like, I think that there's something too like the the laugh track is like it's almost malicious. Mm. So the first episode is filmed in front of a live studio audience. Oh, mm-hmm. I did not know that. I thought they put that's in that cool. Track. No, dropping knowledge on yeah. you guys over here. <laughs> nice. And that's, it was so brilliant that they have an actual studio audience there because you're like you could tell that they were playing to the camera and also to an audience. What I like, you know, what I like yeah. between the two the two filming styles though, is if you look at the first episode which is uh, supposed to be a 50 sitcom, you can see the difference in the cameras. Yes. Mm-hmm. The 60s camera was a little sharper. I don't know if you, you could, you can tell. Yeah, but, I'd have to go b- back and watch, but mm-hmm. you could, you felt, it felt like a 50 sitcom. It, it didn't, I mean, it had some things that stuck out a bit, but this, the whole setup, the way they talk to each other, the way the, the everybody, they, they did such a good job of recreating the feeling. Mm-hmm. And, Honestly, you go back and watch Leave It to Beaver. It's not like you're going to die laughing no. watching that. The jokes are really corny mm-hmm. and a, a little set up. We did laugh at a few things. We, we thought there was a couple of, of good, good jokes in there. But what makes it interesting was the sinister bits, the moments that no. broke that. And the mystery behind it is what I think is driving my entertainment. And I love those old sitcoms. I could watch yeah. those. I thought the show by itself was fine with that. But I wanted those little hooks. Those little hooks is what really would make me sit and watch a whole season of this. Not if we got 12 episodes of, you know, black and white TV. Right. Yeah, I noticed the single camera version of the first episode and then, like Mike was saying, the cameras got sharper. Then you had multi-use cameras for the second episode. Well, not multi, but you get it. There's at least two cameras you could tell. Yeah. Um, what I liked, um, and again, I'm not saying this 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 was incredible. I'm not giving it an A. I'm not getting an F. I'm somewhere still in between trying to process it. But mm-hmm. this gave me a lot of, like, inklings of Lost, the TV show, where you really had to watch every scene and listen to the dialogue. Because it looks like there's things that may be thrown as dialogue or thrown in background of a scene, but it, it may actually be part of a larger mystery that revealed something later on. And that's what I'm hoping that this show really is like mimicking like the, the lost TV shows, but with the MCU twist. Mm-hmm. Um, what's, what's in the box? What's in the mystery box? Who's mm-hmm. the guy with the, the, uh, the beekeeper outfit and the symbol that's on him? You go online and then there's like 20 different Reddit channels about that that's how i used to digest and eat loss when the show yeah. was on um that really intrigued me but as far as some of the actual dialogue some of the jokes yeah it, it, i get it it's not that it's, great it's basically filler for yeah and for from what i've heard from a lot of people who had advanced screening is that the third episode is what really hooks you in but they couldn't release three episodes at once they gave you the first two mm-hmm with hopes that you stick around to watch the third episode. Apparently something in the third episode really not breaks the wall, but it's it, to go outside of the bubble that one has created. Correct. And see like, oh, this is where they're trying to go. And then, you know, but you know, we haven't seen it yet. I'm just giving you third third hand information. Yeah, and there's a lot of speculation about all the side characters in the show too, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. Yeah, lots of that. Mm-hmm. Well, like Paige was saying, there's nothing by accident. There's right. nothing that Oh, they just wanted that as a visual joke. No, they, they everything is purposeful. Yeah, whenever she gets mad or something's breaking the narrative, you have some, an injection of color. Like mm-hmm. the Stark uh, toaster, mm-hmm. the light blinking is, mm-hmm. do you remember her? she was trapped with her brother with a bomb from Stark? Boop, boop, mm-hmm. boop, mm-hmm. boop. And uh, that's what you know, they were trapped by, which led to the whole Avengers thing, uh, Ultron. Then there's a Hydra watch. Yes. (laughs) Everything is like, when when she gets, when the helicopter breaks their reality, it's in color. Mm -hmm. Um, When, you know, the guy starts like, why, why? You know, like, he starts choking. She drops her, you know, silly golly gee, you know, and drops her real voice and it's like help him and it's like mm-hmm. 
whoa, I got like the chills in because I'm like, okay, so she's a, at least somewhat aware something's that she's playing a character to break out of that character. So that that's when I got hooked is when she dropped out of mm-hmm. the you know galley voice, and I'm like, all right, so is she doing this? All right, I'm intrigued now. You've got me. Yeah, You've got me. Show you got. Yeah, they they seem to know that they have to hide their who they are from the rest of who the environment. Mm-hmm. They, yeah, they, they said that right at the beginning. It's yeah. in the theme's yeah. opening theme of mm-hmm. the beginning. But every word is her trying to hold together the fantasy. Right. Now the question is why? So. Probably because she doesn't want to deal with the fact that she's dead. And yeah. She did. yeah. Did you guys hear the voice that constantly was coming in and out, like a crackling with yeah. radio uh, voice? Yeah. Yeah, yeah, Wanda, who's doing it. So do we think we'll get Pietro? No. No. If the, if she can fake bringing back her, her husband, she won't fake bringing back her dead no, brother? No, because she has shown no sense of remorse from yeah. her brother's death since Ultron. That's been my own nitpicks about, <laughs> about her character. Right. Is She totally forgot this dude since his death. Never brought his name again. Never... It's like they just erased him from the rest of the It was the like universe. Coulson. It was like the Coulson death. Everybody's like, yeah, we mourned him last movie. Yeah, we yeah. Him so Meanwhile, much. there's a whole TV series about it. Like, at least bring him back. I thought in Endgame they would bring yeah, him back right? just to close That's the loop. Too. He didn't even go to the funeral. Nope. <laughs> no, they, they decided that Stark's dad was, was going to be important again. Yeah. And that kid from Stark, the Iron Man 3. Oh, jeez. <laughs> Yeah, he got closure more than uh, yeah. than the dead brother. Than the dead brother, yeah. Mm-hmm. <sighs> so, so what was your take, Paige? I know you, this is we wanted. Yeah, we, we yeah, no, I, I totally loved it, but um, but it's because it like just scratched at that whole, you know, hey, you it it for me, this is how I think people who read the Game of Thrones books felt when the Reigns of Kashmir started. Like, oh, they're doing it. They're now. doing it like, now. Oh, shit. They're going there. They're going there. Yeah. Do, you guys, do you guys remember the SNL skit about doing a Marvel um, uh, uh, rom-com with, oh, with, with Scarlett Johansson? <laughs> They've basically no. made a Marvel rom-com. Yeah, I probably saw that when she was hosting, right? Yeah, and, uh, yeah maybe I did. I don't remember that well. So they've literally managed to do it. It was a joke because after like Winter Shoulder it was like, oh, they're gonna make a comedy, which they did. They're gonna make a a seventies thriller. They're gonna make this. Oh, they should make a rom com. That would be funny. Well, guess what? We've gotten there. Mm-hmm. Uh, sort of comedy. I mean, well, <laughs> it's it's it's, it's got a laugh track, and comedy. there's a couple as your main. It's it's a rom com. Yeah, with a mystery in. As the overarching thing. David Lynch does comedy. Mm-hmm. Basically. Right. Yeah, <laughs> I'm definitely gonna it, it's uh I enjoy it. I'm gonna keep watching. I wanna find out oh, what's yeah. happening. So all right, so I'm gonna make everybody give me a grade. Oof. Damn it. I, I it, it obviously not I'll gonna be first. your final yeah, go ahead. All right, as a comic fan and as an MCU fan, I would give it an A. As if I was just watching it, like without any knowledge, like I'm just casual. I'd be like, I guess C because it's neat to see these homages, but it's like okay. And why do I care about these characters? Like okay, so this this lady is playing a role or something. I don't. You're if you're not a fan um, mm-hmm. or you're not familiar, it's, why should I care? Like. Obviously, it, it, you feel like you're missing something. Like, um, I was watching with somebody, and it was like, every now and then I'd be pausing, like, okay, so. <laughs> I get it. We, we mm-hmm. did that here, too. All right. <laughs> who's, who's next? Brooksy, what's your grade? Oh, see, I didn't actually watch it. Oh. I just... <laughs> You she, guys just did all she just did. did you should watch it. You should watch it. <laughs> give your opinion as someone who's like not a, a not a nerd. She did her I might, homework. I did my homework, right? Um, <laughs> I might actually watch it, but 
I did not. I know we're 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 talking about a lot of things, but if you just think of it as a mystery, that's yeah. really the base of it. It's a mystery. That's it's gonna what? start off a little. Oh well, okay. What's this? This is kind of funny. It's this... a mystery wrapped in a rom com, or the other way. Yeah, something like that. Yeah, I think it's a mystery wrapped in a rom com. Yeah. So for me, I'm the second episode was better than the first one for me. Mm-hmm. I, I especially liked uh, Bethany's performance in the second one when he got the gum <laughs> stuck in his drunk, system and he was all drunk. drunk. And so uh, I'm gonna average it up, put them both out to like a B plus. All right, so. James. Um, so I watched it with uh, actually both kids this time. Um, and I, I want to give all three of our grades because I think we might cover the full spectrum um, before Chris brings us home. Uh, Eric gave it a D plus. Um, he has no reference to any of it, does he? No, he only he only knows Marvel and Vision from the uh, MCU movies. Which no, but I mean for the minutes, for the yeah. old the, the style. Oh, that's a great point. Yes, I was gonna get to that. But first, I was like, he already. I mean. Wanda and Vision already underserved to begin with in the MCU movies. Mm-hmm. And to Paige's point, 20 minutes is all he really has of those characters. So he doesn't really care for them. So that being the basis of him watching it, and then you throw the sitcoms on top of that. Yeah, he's watched some of like the 70s, like Three's Company with me, you know, but he's never really gone back and watched any of those. So to him, it was not entertaining. Uh, it wasn't fulfilling. It was boring. D+. Plus. Mm-hmm. Serena who's a huge fan of uh, Elizabeth Olsen, who actually liked both these characters in the movie, which is a whole different conversation, um, thought it was an A-. She really enjoyed what they did. She has watched some of these older um, uh, Bewitch, especially. Um, mm-hmm. So she found a lot more entertainment in the... Um, like, she was, like, constantly, like, trying to get the Easter eggs and stuff. Um, she gave it an A-. I was probably in the middle of the two. I'm, my grade was a B- minus because I think... Episode one was too much of a filler as opposed to trying to set the stage. Like episode two to me was much more evolved. Mm -hmm. Um, It felt richer. It felt like the chemistry between Paul Bettany and Elizabeth Olsen was finally, to me, I've seen more in that episode than the entire history of the two of them together. Oh, yeah. Right? (laughs) How how they care about each other, how they kind of support the other one, and the other one is protective of. Like, to me, it felt like, okay, they finally hit their stride between the two of them acting in front of the camera, and and the script is there. So that's why I wouldn't give it any lower than B minus, because I really did enjoy Mm -hmm. episode two. So that's that's the Lab of Steel's grade. All right. So we also watched as a group. Now, it was first with me of my my three kids um now they have all been they have all seen black and white sitcom stuff my especially like my father-in-law watches you know the the laurel hardy and things like that we've watched bewitched we've watched all that stuff so they they get the feeling of the show also they're all varying levels of mcu fans okay my daughter isn't in and out. She's like, if she really likes something, she'll watch it over and over again. She's the younger, youngest. So, like, she loves Tom Holland and the Spider-Man stuff, mm-hmm. right? But she has watched all of them. Um, no, she's watched all of the main one, the, the uh, Avengers stuff, rather than all of the individual movies. So she, she, nobody has a real specific attachment to Vision or Wanda, except for the fact, and I'm just realizing now, though Vision isn't a big part, Wanda has been a character in a lot of the X-Men cartoons. Mm -hmm. And so we have actually had that character around quite a bit in various incarnations. And even though I've been a big X-Men fan for a long time, Wanda was actually not a huge 90s character specifically. She she appeared here and there and her brother, but it wasn't like she was a main show um, for for what I was reading. But I would say for me, as the fan, the huge MCU fan, the comic fan, the whole shebang, um, I would say, yeah, an A- minus between the two episodes. The first episode, yeah, was a little slower. I was very surprised actually watching it that it was... It was so, like, I don't want to say void of the the hooks, but it really felt, I was like, did, did any of you get to the 
see that there was seven minutes left at the end of the show and go, okay, so what's going to happen? What's the, what's the catch? What are they going to do? I did. Yeah. And I there wasn't exactly. And it, and it was, and it was just, it was seven minutes of, of, uh, even when the credits, credits were rolling, I thought there was going to be credits, more. Yeah, I was a hundred percent sure there was going to be it something. Two episodes at once because you're like, all right, episode one's not going to hook anybody. Right, it's not. So it wouldn't then, even hook me, you know. I'd be like, all right, well. But like you said, Paige, that that one moment, those one moment, you're like, oh, there's something interesting there. Oh, mm-hmm. that thing's right. Okay, that's interesting. And then two, when she, and I was like, okay, two was great because not only did we get a little bit more of the neighbor and her kind of spunky fun. Um, the, the whole thing with the, the women's group setting up the, the housewives, the housewives <laughs> thing. So Brooks, yeah, there's like a housewives group. So housewives of MCU. Uh, the real housewives, housewives of, uh, I'm not even going to go with that Gigi, but no, I got to go with that Gigi. Uh, Anya <laughs> from, um, um, Buffy the Vampire Slayer is the devil character. So the is that Mephisto? The it's, people are saying Mephisto. I don't think they're going to do that, but okay, all right. but no, I think, not yet. I think a lot of the fun is all the people making theories because it's like right. definitely giving you like they're basically like kiss some stuff. What is it? Right. Yeah. Exactly. It's so so, so yes, yeah, episode two gave you a lot to work with, mm-hmm. a, and the big break in the world was Wanda going no, rewinding time. And redoing a whole scene over again, like and then that's deciding to be pregnant, yeah, right? But but the way they did it was actually pretty marvelous. How they rewind as if you're rewinding a VHS tape of the show uh-huh. you're watching. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it was it was the perfect lines and everything as opposed that's to exactly what I want from the show. They could do all of the different seasons, or all of the different episodes if they have something like that in there. That's a huge hook, and it brought my grade way up. Yeah. It was really interesting. I can't wait to see the next one so now my kids they didn't give me a a letter grade but i know they were really excited because they forced my wife to watch and she is that person who really cares not an ounce for any of it and we asked my my wife to watch we only watched the first episode and she again she gets the the 50s style but she's had to sit through it with all the kids going oh look at that oh and that and what about that (laughs) So, so yeah, I don't know how entertaining that is to have someone just yelling, four people yelling at you to look at things on the screen. So my poor wife had to sit through that. So I don't know if it'll catch her. Maybe when you get more of a mystery thing, because she likes mysteries, we can hook her in. But it, I just noticed it like there wasn't a hook for her yet. Yeah, the show was like page points at the screen. <laughs> That's really what it was. It was like, oh, I didn't even no! notice that. I didn't notice that the first time around. Do you guys see that? It's like, yeah. look at the brooch. And so it was like, the brooch means nothing to me. I'm like, but it means everything. <laughs> and they're on Google, like the whole episode. You're on, on Google or Twitter. <laughs> so, I'm so like, oh, oh hey, by the way, did you know that this character inspired Jack Harkness from Doctor Who, are you interested <laughs> in watching the show now? You know. So, so I've seen people online give the show some lower grades, or saying it's awful or terrible. And I think it, it it's an interesting view. You can say, yeah, it's not the Winter Soldier show or whatever the Loki show, which are going to be pretty. Feels like they're going to be straightforward, uh, pro- pro- protagonists with enemies and they're going to be fighting and they're going to be whatevering around this is definitely a very big chance and like brooke said they are taking a huge swing with this type of show mm-hmm. and i'm yeah but loki's going to be wild too because loki's going to be traveling around all over different times and yeah but yeah you're not... but i feel like loki's going to have a lot of action in it to keep like the Probably. general the yeah. general non MC. well let me not say that the average person who's not looking for something a little more heady, a little more, you know, mm-hmm. highbrow, just to sit back, eat popcorn, and enjoy Loki doing shenanigans, you know? <laughs> right. Yeah, it's going to feel like a shigan- shenanigan show. Whereas this is definitely like, you got to, it's pulling you. Like, come on, come on. I got a little bit more. Come plus on, they, I got more. Plus, they know Loki more than. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And that's true, too. Did, I, I found out recently that Elizabeth. 
uh, that Elizabeth Olsen never signed a huge contract. Mm. Everything she has done has been individual, individually contracted, unlike wow. a lot of other stars. So I'm, and they're spending like two hundred twenty million on this sh show. Get the freak out of here! Wow, it's it's like Batman v Superman level. Two twenty million. Wow. Yeah, like Winter Soldier, I think is a hundred and fifty million or something like that. That I saw. Well, not, not Winter Soldier. I thought you were about to say um. Captain, Falcon uh, and Winter Falcon. Soldier. Yeah, I saw yeah. The, the CGI for that. I was like, holy cow, that looks like it's expensive. So I don't know what they're doing because so far this isn't needing to a, a few a few uh, little hooks of color and things like that. So there must be some big stuff coming up if they You're right. Just... Each episode is twenty five million. <laughs> what? Uh, the guy who has in only... color. I mean, it's the, in black and white. <laughs> the guy with the only '50s black and white camera was like, "It's gonna cost you, man." He's the last one alive. Probably. This rental is it, really expensive. Black and white, Dick Van Dyke's filming. like, "Hey, I'm in like my late '90s, so <laughs> oh you want me God. to write something for you?" That's <laughs> right. Filming with 4K cameras just because it's in black and white doesn't mean they're not filming in high def, right? So... Really, Mike? I didn't know that. No, I was yeah, talking Mike. to James. James was like, "Well, they're filming in black and white," you know. Why is it twenty five million dollars? <laughs> no, you gotta imagine still... too. I have. I imagine they're gonna be uh, the guest stars in the later episodes as well, right? Yeah, I have a feeling they're paying big bucks for all yeah. of the people, and there's gonna be a lot of people. Yeah, this yeah. Is very visual effects heavy, apparently. Okay, so here's my question. Last one. Who do we think is the big bad? Is it Sword? Is it Aim? Is it Hydra? Who is holding Wanda? I think it's Sword. I think, I it's think Wanda's mind. I think it's a combination of the two. Yeah. I think you think she's by herself and in complete control of herself mm. versus in a experimental lab held by this other group. I think she's held by this other group and she's putting herself in a situation to ease her mind because it's fractured. I think Sword because apparently there's an Easter egg. Somebody zoomed in on the beekeeper guy in the back of his yeah, outfit a was a sword down. logo yeah and then that connects to captain marvel at the end where um nick fury was was it captain marvel or spider-man um far from home when probably he was in space home. yeah nick fury was in a sword um vessel in space it's like sentient weapon observation well they're basically they take Something over for great. shield after yeah there's space the version of shield right yeah but they, the beekeeper outfit is an aim looking thing. So I, it's, I think there's someone trying to get into her brain. Mm, Modoc. Mm. Mm. Nah, I, don't, I don't think we really want Modoc. But I know they're working on Modoc connected. So I know they are sentient world observation and response department. Jesus, can you be more nerdy? <laughs> <laughs> All right. So I, I'm gonna say. That yeah, she's being held in a in a room by the shield, the sword organization. I know. <laughs> Sorry, read the chat. Oh, <laughs> I, I'm gonna vote that nobody's doing it. She's doing it to herself, and they're trying to wake her up. Yeah, I I I would say that except the Wanda, the the voice in the radio. Is telling me that someone was Nick trying. Fury? Nick Fury, maybe. Someone was trying to get into her, and they're saying someone's doing something to her. Yeah. Serena thinks it's it's um, Steve Rogers trying to wake her up. Oh, that, that's what that's what she thought. I thought and it was he's Nick Fury. he's said he's. The news was that he might come back for an episode of something. Yeah. But they already filmed this, so that means yeah. he had already done it. If they, if he is on the show, he already filmed it. That's true. That's true. All right. I guess we'll find out. That's right. Uh, Keep watching. Yeah. Download this video and pause it and look in our background. There are some mysteries back there for you to tell your friends. Easter eggs. That's right. Get more people to download this video. <laughs> You'll find all the Easter eggs. Like uh, Brooks is plant means something i'm telling you it means something yes. and the vehicles that are driving by they mean something too that's right my that's plant's right. name is gwen gwen stacy gwen stacy stefani she's like who's that yeah i don't know who it is i just know my plant's name is gwen spider, i didn't would, name it you would love spider gwen <laughs> all right you, you didn't watch the 
the um, Spider Verse. Spider Verse. Miles Morales no, into the Spider Verse. No, she didn't watch. Oh, with us. If there's any comic book movie to recommend, it's that. Yeah, it's, a, it's, it's an animated so movie. Beautiful. Yeah, you didn't watch that with us, Brooks. I forgot why, but yeah. Yeah, you don't need to be a comics fan to like it. It is so. What is it called? Spider Verse. Into Spider-verse? the Spider Verse. Into the Spider Verse. It's on Netflix. I think they just took it from Oh, Netflix. they just oh. took it off. Disney Plus. It should be coming to Disney Plus yeah. soon. Oh, okay. I it's have a... Disney Plus. Oh, no, it's a Sunny. It's a Sony. Sunny. No, Sony. I think it, I think it's still on Disney Plus. Ooh, oh, we'll maybe have not. To look. Yeah, I think it look. just came off yeah, at the you're new right, year. You're right. That was that used to be Eric's favorite movie for a long time. We He's bought it. We bought it for my daughter for Christmas because it was coming off. That's right. All right. Before we chat some more and lose track again, mm-hmm. I want to thank everybody for joining me. Thank Paige for showing up and and giving us the lowdown. And we'll be talking about it more. So mm-hmm. if you want to talk more about it as more more come out. I don't know what that was. That was Mike. <laughs> I can see. That was Mike. All right. Mike but is being told. I, to I pulled up. up the Netflix webpage, and of course, they start auto loading trailers. Ah. Uh, all right. Uh, Mike. They do do that. Mike, can you tell everybody where they can find us to help us out? Yeah. You know, we're on uh, some of those social media sites uh, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram at Hero Speak. And don't forget to follow us on YouTube and. Smash that like button. Share our videos. Like, please leave comments as well. Subscribe. Please leave comments. Yeah, leave comments and subscribe. That's right. And uh, also, oh, sorry. no, I was just gonna say if you're and also share our videos on Facebook, social media. Tell platforms. your friends. Exactly. Especially if they have geek questions, they'll they'll <laughs> learn a bunch of stuff. Yeah. I was stumped today. All right, Brooks. What what was you? What did you want to say? Oh, I was going to say tomorrow we're going to wake up and we're going to have a new president, so it's going to be a good day. Are you waking up at noon? I'm like, what time are you awake? Oh, yeah, she's three hours behind. She's three hours behind behind us. Lucky you. (laughs) That's all right. I'm getting a pardon tomorrow, so about 1130. Uh, Lil Wayne got a pardon. That's right. He did? He did for his federal gun charges. Yo, I guess it wasn't. That's that probably different. why he was like promoting Trump. I was gonna oh say. yeah, absolutely. Yeah. What did Ice Cube want? <laughs> Good one. All right, guys. Uh, oh, just we're gonna head Spider Verse is still on Netflix in Canada. <laughs> is it on Heroes Peak? <laughs> Look at Brooks's face. Like I'm not in Canada. All right. So this should be on Heroes Peak. Well, take Brooks. a look. Take a look at your Netflix feed. Do a search, right? Yeah, right. yeah, absolutely. We'll see. All right. All right. Good night, Good everybody. Night, Thank you very much. Good night. Peace Good out. Good luck, America. <laughs> May the force be with you. <laughs>